Hi, this is Brett with Aim Small, Miss Small TV, and today we're going to be installing a jar trigger in this Tico T1X 20 inch barrel. Currently, it's got the factory trigger with a Yodave spring, which I got to be honest with you is pretty good. It's got about a one pound, five ounce trigger pull. It's clean, crisp, but it's just not light enough. I, I really would like a lighter trigger and. Um, a fellow shooter at the range mentioned jarred trigger, which I've never heard before. What he said, and it, I couldn't believe what he said, if he had it to do over again, he has a Biggs and Andy trigger in there that's, you know, it's a $450 trigger. He would get the jar trigger. The jar trigger's about $125. Price seems to be creeping up a little bit. I've bought four in the last probably 30 days. But uh, with that said, I intend to install the jar trigger and what I, my goal is is to get six to eight ounces. That's what my other rifles are and that's what I'm shooting for. By the way, this is the fancy packaging that Jarred has. They're not a retail, I, I'm guessing they don't sell it in a retail store so they don't put it in a fancy package like you would get with the Timney trigger. You know that saves the consumer money ultimately because packaging is not cheap. And then it comes in a bag with a manual. Now here's the thing, you might notice this is not a jar trigger. This is actually a Timney trigger. My prop, unfortunately, got put in another uh, person's rifle. Which, let me just take a second and talk to you about the Timney triggers. I like the Timney triggers, but if maybe you've seen in my past videos, I've had challenges with the Timney triggers. Currently, my CZ at one does still have a Timney trigger in there, and I haven't had any issues since previously had issues. And you know, this this gentleman's story, or this rifle's, or this trigger story is kind of like what I originally went through with my CZ at one. I was I shot probably 2,500 rounds in that thing, and it shot great. Then all of a sudden, and I honestly don't remember what the challenge is probably have to go find those videos and see but all of a sudden it stopped shooting I don't I honestly don't remember what what part stopped shooting I don't but I will tell you this on this guy when you close a bolt it wanted you want to catch a sear so it wanted basically cock the rifle and this is after shooting you know several hundred rounds in it and so all of a sudden it just stopped being reliable. We took took the rifle apart, or took the action out, tightened the the um, trigger rate trigger weight screw to see if that would help. Didn't help. Sa same kind of problem. You know I don't understand, and it's it's a little bit of, it's a little bit frustrating, but this is becoming kind of consistent. I've had now three t uh, uh, Timney triggers that I've had challenges with. You know, ultimately, I, I'm not trying to cut down Timney at all, but I can I care about you consumers. So if I'm going to recommend a product and it ends up failing on me, I'm going to let you know because the whole purpose of me doing these videos, where I'm going to I'll take the risks. I'll try the product. I'll sh find out what rifle shoots. I'll find out what ammo shoots good. So hopefully you guys can save money not having to deal with that. Same thing with the, the equipment. If the equipment starts off great and then is just not reliable, I'll let you know. If the equipment is not reliable from the beginning, I'll let you know. Now, if something's not reliable from the beginning, I'll probably won't even do a video on it because, like I said, I, the stuff I want to test is stuff that I have success with. And I had success with the Timney triggers at the beginning. And, uh, you know, they just, after 200 about 2,500 rounds, like I said on my CZ, it just stopped working correctly and I needed to share that. Since, now I will say, Timney at the time, I, I got a hold of them right away. They sent me two sear springs. Like I was the first, of, one of the first, you know, in the early adopter on these triggers. I bought them right as soon as I saw they came out. So I think T Timney realized what was wrong and basically they sent me some heavier springs and once I installed those springs, I had challenges for maybe the first, maybe 100 rounds, but then it's been great ever since, and we're probably talking, you know, another 1,500 rounds since then. I didn't mean to 
go around that way, but in a lot of ways, it's just why we're here today and talking about it. So we're going to do a, um, a jar trigger. We're going to install it. The goal is to get to about six to eight ounces with a clean crisp trigger pull. Now this trigger is very adjustable, but in this video, I do not adjust it. I drop it in and, and happy with the way it is. So let's cut away to where I'm actually testing the trigger weight of the factory uh, of the factory trigger. I'll start show you an image of both triggers side by side. We'll go and do the pull weight on the factory trigger. I've already removed the stock, which probably would have not have been the best way to do it. I should have done it in the stock. And then we'll go ahead and install the trigger, and then I'll come back to you. I have a snap cap in the receiver, loaded, cocked. Let's see what the factory trigger is with the Yodave spring, as far as the pull weight. One point eight. One point seven four. So when I say one point seven four, I obviously mean one pound. 7.4 ounces, which is obviously what I should have said. One pound, 3.3 ounces. Ideally, I would have done this before I took off the stock, but you know, I didn't think about it. Okay, uh, one pound, 2.1 ounces. One more. Oh, bummer. Okay, snap caps back in. Okay, one pound, 3.3. .3. The average of all five is one, point, one pound, 5.3 ounces. Factory trigger jar trigger jarred manual step one remove bolt I'm going to use a five millimeter allen wrench to remove this bolt but before I do that I need to move the adjusting trigger trigger adjustment screw because I did loosen that originally so I actually need to tighten that okay remove this guy by the way, I've already loosened this. This bolt was extremely tight. Okay, removing the factory trigger. Installing the jarred trigger. When I really originally set this in, it wasn't going in very well. This guy right here was very easy to bend. I just kind of bent it out this way a little bit. Kind of already that doesn't really make me feel warm and fuzzy for sure. But the good news, it was an easy fix.
Well, hopefully I got that in there as tight as the original one was. By eye, it looks like it's even here. You know, it doesn't just fit in there nice and you know it's there. You know, it does wiggle, so you, you got to get it in there. But I think that's mounted. I don't remember how easy the Yo Dave spring was to install. I'm, I'm guessing it was pretty easy, but I honestly don't remember. But I will say installing this jar trigger was, I mean, super easy. So I, I thank Tika for that very much. One, one thing I had to do is I had to, and I believe I mentioned it in the video, I just had to bend the, the, the safety kind of away from the action because I just couldn't get it in. I've installed four of these triggers now. No, three. I've installed three of these triggers now. And one is on order because I had to replace this. And um, each one of those I've had to bend the safety. So it's pretty consistent on how that is. And it's very easy to bend. Which, you know, some may love, some may, may, may not. But it was an easy install. As mentioned earlier, I didn't really do any tweaking of the trigger. I put it in there. I was happy with the trigger pull weight in the fill. Uh, you know, as far as the, the Christmas, well, I won't say crisp, but I'm going to hold off on that part for a second. But, you know, the trigger pull was, was good. I did not go through the manual and, and adjust the trigger. It does come with a good manual. I mean, I read it. It seems good. That tells you how to really kind of tweak the trigger to get the most out of it and get it to work the way you want it to work. I was happy with how it came from the factory, and that's today how it sits. I may, may play around with that later, but for now, I was happy with the easy install. All right, let's take a look at what the pull weight is of the new trigger. Reinstall the bolt. Alright, Snapcats in, remember, let's go ahead and see where we're at right from the factory on this trigger. What they say is they say they send it, they being jar, ooh, whoa, what? Hold on, let me get that in there. What jar says is they send it where it's safe, you know, roughly, they might have used more legal terms. Ooh, seven point seven uh, point one ounces. Holy smokes! Six ounces. I think I'm going to be one happy person. Five point six. Five point one ounces. Six ounces at a uh, average of five shots. Wow! If this shoots, as long as this trigger doesn't mess up any of my shooting. <laughs> We're going to be in good shape. Okay, there's no pre-travel. None. And I don't know if I care too much about that or not, really, to be honest with you. Oh, that's nice. With the snap cap out, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can do a little safety check here, slamming the bolt, and see how see what happens.
And I do know the safety works. Let me switch the safety. Okay. So far this is pretty safe. I'm going to put it on the stock, beat it on the butt of the stock, make sure nothing happens. But so far, this thing is pretty awesome. I have the rifle on a bipod now, so I have a clear ability to test the, the trigger pull without the rest getting in the way. Okay, eight ounces. Six ounces. Five ounces. Whoa, 2.6 2. ounces. It's getting a little something. Seven point six ounces. So out of five, that's five point nine ounces. But that was kind of all over the place, huh? All right, let's give this another five pulls. Okay, eight ounces again. Okay, 7.2. Four, and that did feel lighter. Seven ounces. All right, when I'm pulling the trigger, it seems fine. So I have a feeling we're in good shape. It looks like we're probably right around seven ounces between, let's say even six and eight ounces. I don't think my finger is gonna really be able to tell the difference as I'm shooting. I'll take it to the range on Friday in a couple days. We'll try it out. I probably will not film it, but at least I'll report back to you and see how we did. Okay, so you can see the results were exactly what I wanted between six and eight ounces. I am happy with the trigger. And I will say this, the rifle that I installed this trigger in, when I was testing the trigger pull, I kind of noticed that sometimes the trigger had to give a little before it would break. You know, I don't know, maybe there's optical illusion with my trigger pull weight tester whatever you call those things uh, but I will say this like you know that I then kind of tested the trigger and I will say the pole isn't crisp like some people will say like glass or whatever it's not that uh, in fact I don't think it's as crisp as a factory trigger not his anyway um, let's see here his was it wasn't spongy either It was, it wasn't crisp. It was fine. Now I've shot this rifle with the trigger, which I've already mentioned, which will be my second video. So I was very happy with the performance. Kind of like I said with the Timney trigger, once you get a trigger that, that the pull weight is kind of where you like it, it's almost like 
it takes pulling the trigger out of the equation. You know, when you have a heavy trigger and you keep adding weight, keep adding weight, keep adding weight till the thing breaks, and you you know you kind of want it to surprise you. You, you got to work on making sure your trigger pull is good. You still do on this, probably maybe a little more important. But as long as you're kind of what I try to do is I'm picturing my finger going right into my you know back straight to my chest. But you're not having to kind of wait for it to go off. It's just you know it just kind of goes off and it's just smooth. Again. It's not a crisp break, it just kind of goes, so you don't really notice it. I think I'm okay with that. Now, I do have a Bix and Andy trigger in my unlimited rifle, and that's just a whole nother experience in itself. I want to say that's about two ounces, and I do, I don't know, the Chinese or Japanese, maybe the Japanese trigger pull. And there's something just sweet about that trigger. I don't know how to explain it at all, but I'm not going to talk about it too much more. Basically, I like the jar trigger. It takes, like I said, the trigger pull kind of, it makes it just, it just naturally just breaks when you want it to break. Work on your trigger control and you're going to be in good shape, I think. Take a look at my next video. I'll try to get that out probably, I'm going to try to get this out Sunday, which is tomorrow. I'll try to get that other video out, let's say Wednesday. And, um... Enjoy the, the trigger cam. I thought that was pretty cool. And I'm going to be using that to, to shoot videos again, learning how to shoot in the wind. I think that's so, so, so important. And a lot of people just, just kind of dismiss it. But I think it's important. Please like, subscribe, ring that bell. Thank you and God bless.